Joe and I are on the way to the train station. We're gonna hop on the train on the Amtrak and uh, go to the city because we have a Clean Tech Open event. I'm excited because I have not been on a train in like a decade. trains particularly interesting because of how they're inexorably tied to the industrial revolution and the explosion of the energy industry. Before the coal engine we were mostly using wood and water as our energy source. The factories usually had to be positioned near water sources. It took the introduction of the coal engine to allow factories to move away from forests and water sources, allowing for greater economic expansion. This played a huge role in the advent of modern cities. This industrialization also demanded expansion in transportation infrastructure, you know, to transport the coal. This opened up wider markets, and so the machine went. getting on a bus. I don't have anything prepared to talk about buses, so we'll just pretend we didn't get on a bus. And it was all trains. Good job, Joe. And time to find out where we gotta go for the Clean Tech Open. I have no idea, I just follow Joe. He makes these plans. Where are we going, Joe? Pretty good? I'll figure it out. Apparently we can't film here. They're for some reason super strict about letting us film here, so I may be doing a lot of covert phone footage from here on out. transport in the U.S. is transported by train. And yet the U.S. railroads say there's no future in coal, which is true. Joe decided to stop for some oysters. Delicious oysters. There was a time when coal was the lifeblood of the Industrial Revolution. But at this point, it's just a dangerous, damaging, and not to mention needlessly expensive endeavor. This leads me to why you need to know what types of energy to use when, and the importance of how different energies have different qualities. And that's something I'm gonna have Zach talk about a little bit. Today I'm going to be talking about, in a, any sort of power system, but I guess particularly in a solar power system, choosing your base form of energy. All the energy that your system is getting is, is in the form of light. A lot of that light is visible, some of it's not, but it's all light. And you need to do something with that energy. You need to uh, heat up a room or power a computer, whatever it might be, uh, move something, um, power, power anything, right? Cool down your refrigerator, things like this. Um, these ultimate use cases are in many different forms, motion, uh, thermal, um, electricity. There's really no one form of energy that is overwhelmingly what's used. Uh, heat is the most used form of energy, uh, particularly in commercial and residential applications. You need to be able to have many forms of energy. But the decision that you, that you need to make is, is sort of how are you going to get there from this light. 
you can say that we're not designing a complete power system, which is what a lot of people do, and we're just trying to address a couple of these concerns. So for example, we're going to make a solar thermal um, collector that just does makes hot water for, for someone's house. Um, or we're going to design a solar thermal collector, but it's going to be very, very high temperature heat and it's only converted to electricity and put onto the grid. The reason why electricity became so popular is because uh, electricity is um, in an abstract, to use an abstract term, it's a very high quality energy. Uh, and <coughs> The, the quality of energy thing ultimately comes down to entropy. In general, electricity is very low entropy. The major benefit of heat that you, you can't look past is it has a extremely easy to vary entropy. It can go anywhere from uh, you know the, the, the lowest quality dirt energy that there is and you know it's, it, it's generally considered a, a waste form of energy. You can make it with 100% efficiency to a very very high quality of, of, of energy and the only thing you have to do to vary that is is raise the temperature relative to, to, the, to the environment. And, and the reason why that's really good is you can make this very low quality of energy at an extremely high efficiency. And a lot of the energy that we use doesn't need to be high quality. So you can heat your swimming pool, you can heat your home, you can power all these sort of industrial tasks where, where you're just boiling water or something like that, purifying water, um, you can do with very low quality of energy. And then there's some medium quality of, of energy things like you know uh, cooling down your refrigerator, uh, some other things like this. Only after you've powered everything else by directly using this lower quality of energy do you increase the temperature of the heat that your system is making and then uh, convert to electricity or whatever else you're doing and use that higher quality of energy. So the, the really important thing is you only take that efficiency hit when it's absolutely necessary. What we're doing at TenKiv is making a uh, complete integrated solar power system that's supposed to be able to power anything. It's supposed to be effortlessly adaptable to fit in all of these different situations. Obviously, what we're making isn't the first solar thermal power system ever, although not really many people have delved into an integrated power system that is, is based around heat, but certainly not the first solar thermal collector. Something that a lot of people don't realize is heat is used in energy systems all the time. Uh, and it, 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 in, in most ways of thinking about it, energy revolves around heat. Uh, for example, uh, nuclear power or fossil fuels, those are, those are both thermal systems. They burn the fossil fuels, have a, a substance undergo fission or fusion and get heat from that. Then they run that heat through a, through a heat engine that produces electricity. So yeah, that's sort of a brief overview of argument of heat versus electricity as your sort of base form of energy that a power system revolves around. Hopefully I gave some explanation of the advantages of um, using thermal energy as your sort of base form of energy for your system versus uh, electricity. So converting directly from light to heat and then doing something with that heat as opposed to converting directly from light to electricity and then doing something with that electricity. And I think I'm sort of rambling now and going over the same things I've already talked about. This is Arya's punishment for making me do a video and I'm really, really tired. So uh, yeah, uh, hope, hope this made some sense to somebody and, um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you.